So, you remember I said that this was going to get weird? This is the time that it's going to get weird. I'm going to try my weird idea on the back first, because if I screw it up, I can sand it back down and then do something else. As I mentioned before, it kind of annoys me that this piece of wood and this piece of wood look so different, and they're not... It's not even going down the middle. It's at a slant, right? So, instead of trying to hide that, I could hide it by painting it, but I don't want to paint it. Let me explain why I don't want to paint it. This time of year, in North Carolina, where I live, it's like it's the monsoon season. And I hate painting. Because I can't paint inside, because this is my, you know, basement. This is my garage or whatever. And my bedroom is right there. So if I paint in here, I can smell it in there when I go to bed. And I don't want to do that. So I have to paint outside. And since it's the monsoon season in North Carolina, it rains all the time. And it'll take me an extra month to paint this thing if I decide to paint it. I've been painting this guitar for a month. Because, you know, it keeps getting screwed up. I'm still not done. So I'm not painting. A lot of people suggested I paint it. Not painting. Also, I want to show how to do this for the average person who may not, you know, have a paint booth or a little thing to hang a guitar from when they're painting it. So this is the easiest way is staining it. Now I'm going to make it difficult, but you can just take the stain and rub it all over it and stain it one color and be good. Anyway, back to the plan. So since these are two very different pieces of wood, I'm going to treat them like two different guitars. So I want this to look like it was two guitars that were chopped up and put together. So, where this line is, I'm going to take some painter's tape and separate them. Okay, so now these are separated, right? So I'm going to do this half in like a burst, because that would look good with this flamed mahogany. I'm also going to put some tape around here, just to protect. I don't want to get any stain on the neck because I don't know yet what I'm doing on the neck. All right. So I've got three different dyes here. I've got th th thalo blue, royal blue, and purple. So this is the lightest and then of course this is the darkest of the three. So I'm going to have the darkest on the outside, lightest on the inside. We're going to pretend that the whole guitar was like this, right? So we're just going to do like around here, right? That's the plan. I'm going to start with the lightest color first. And, okay, keeping with the whole theme of doing this, you know, at home, you don't have to buy, you know, specific made-for-wood dyes or stains. You can do this with um, clothing dye, like writ dye, like the liquid that you buy in the bottle, and they make a whole bunch of colors. I've seen people do it. All right, so I'm going to start with the, the lighter blue. I'm just kind of go over, all over with, with this. This may bleed over. I don't know. It might go underneath the the tape. We're going to find out together. I keep getting text messages. I'm going to go all the way to the edge. This is going to get covered, but I want the three colors to kind of blend into each other. Alright, that's the lighter blue. Now the darker blue. Use a different piece of t-shirt for each one of these. Obviously. Now I'm going to go from the outside. Go from the outside and then come in a little bit. All right. Now there's not a huge difference between these two blues, so you may not see much of a difference yet. You kind of want to blend them a little bit. It's my second blue. Now my purple. Another piece of t-shirt, different one for each color. And you want this just on the very outside. Now you see there's a hard line. We're gonna smooth that out. 
I'm gonna take some of the royal blue, the medium blue, and do a little bit more with it. All right, so, and I kinda wanna rub it into the purple. It's bursting, it's bursting out. That's why they call it a burst. But you want it to go into the purple so that they blend. And then you take your light blue. And I didn't put any more dye on the piece of rag. I'm just gonna use this to blend everything and just keep rubbing until there's no discernible line between each color. And there you have it. There's half of the guitar with a, a burst on it. It's pretty simple, right? I just did that, just then. So I'm gonna give that a little bit to dry and then we'll come back. And don't throw your gloves away. You can reuse them. You let them go inside out, and then you can just put them right back on later. Look at that. Don't waste gloves. Uh, one thing I forgot to do. I didn't prepare the wood. I was so excited to do this that I didn't prepare the wood properly, okay? I'm sorry. Anyway, so now the, my uh, surface is, is rough, right? Because I put this water-based stain on this wood that, I mean, I sanded it to 320, but I forgot to raise the grain and then sand it again. So, I'm gonna sand it again. 320. And just, it doesn't have to be a hard sanding, just a light sanding to get those little fuzzies that you brought up with the stain. Also, the first time that you that you put the stain down, sometimes it'll show you places that still had sand marks because you didn't sand it well enough to begin with. So this is a good time to fix that because I've got to do this dyeing all over again. Oh, I am so glad I went over that a second time. I don't know how well this is going to show on camera, but the edge is like really purpley. Yeah, that half is gonna look cool. The other half might look like garbage. Stay tuned to find out. So I decided to stop being afraid and I went ahead and did the front as well. So front, back, sides. This half is now dyed. That kind of rhymed. So now that's gonna take the paint, the tape off and it didn't bleed over. So we are safe. Oh man, that is so weird. So now, I've got to tape off this side and do that side. Stay tuned. For this side, I'm going to do reds. I'm going to start with cherry red, maybe do some crimson red on the outside. Gloves on. There we are. Now that's weird. I like it. So I guess it's time to continue the weirdness because I got to dye the neck. So I'm thinking because this red half kind of goes in more on the neck, I'll just do the neck red too. Yeah, sure. Why not? So I'm going to dye the, the fretboard black, even though I've been suggested not to. Just because I want to see what it looks like, and I'd rather screw this one up than something else. This is experimental!
Also, I don't know if this neck has been like oiled previously or what they did to it, you know, when they put it together. So this may not penetrate very well. It may not stay very well. But that's why I'm doing it, so that you uh, don't have to, just in case it's a bad idea. Now you can see I got uh, dye all over the binding, but that's okay, because we're gonna scrape the binding later. I'll show you how, don't worry, we'll get to it. Now my dye, my dye is all dry, my next step is to apply the finish. So I'm gonna use an oil finish, I'm gonna use this True Oil, which is made for gun stocks, but it's awesome on guitars as well. Before I do that though, I need to get the dye off of the binding. So I'm going to do that with a blade. You can use an X-Acto knife. This is just a little craft knife that I have. So what you do, so you take and you figure out how far in it goes, right? And you put your thumb as a block. And you don't cut, you scrape. And because you're using your thumb as a stop, it won't go too far, you won't scrape it off of the wood. Okay, I got my binding scraped, I'm ready to go. Now this stuff, as I said, is called True Oil. You can find this at like Walmart. People use it for refinishing gun stocks and things like that. But it's great, because it's, it's nearly foolproof. So your first coat that you go on, you want it to like really soak into the wood. So I just douse it. And then just rub it in. They say you can rub this stuff in with your bare hands, but I like to wear gloves so that I don't smell like oil. I got a little bit on the fretboard. I didn't want it on the fretboard. I don't want to put any on the fretboard. I'm going to use different stuff on the fretboard. But anyway, yeah, this first coat, just slop it on there because it's going to soak in. I'll even take the rag and just dump it on the rag. Okay, so I'm going to let this soak for 15-20 minutes, and then come back and just wipe it all off. There we go. Now the cool thing about True Oil is if you want uh, kind of a matte finish like this, you can just leave it like this. Let this, let this sit overnight and finish curing. Um, or, you can keep building up coats. And you can keep going and keep going until it's like super glossy and shiny. Um, so it's totally up to you. I may do one more coat, maybe two, but I'm not going to build it up a whole lot. All right, so I've been letting this cure for about 12 hours. Um, my shop is really cold, so I took it into a warmer room so that everything could cure up real nice. Uh, and since I'm going to do another coat, first I'm going to smooth everything out with this Scotch Bright, the red Scotch Bright. It's kind of a, you know, it's it's like steel wool kind of but it doesn't leave little bits of steel all over so anyway i'm just going to rub it down with this lightly just to smooth it make it feel nice and then i'm going to do another coat of the oil all right so i've put about three or four coats of the true oil on the guitar and let it set and cure and now it's basically it's you know it's it's finished, you know, not done, but finished. And um, with the true oil, you can still feel like the wood grain, you know, it doesn't feel like super slick, which is okay with me. I, I, I like it. I like it's got a little texture to it, you know, because it's made of wood, so it feels like wood. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to try, uh, just to kind of give it a little bit more luster, so I'm going to try some of this Renaissance wax. Now, we're trying to keep this affordable for the average person, so this isn't necessary, because this stuff's expensive. But I've got it, because, you know, I use it for other things that I do. And from the smell of it, it kind of smells like shoe polish, to me, anyway. Yeah, it smells like shoe polish. So it's probably similar to that. It's a micro, micro crystalline wax polish. I get a little on the rag, and then rub it in. And this stuff works really fast. When you rub it on and then rub it off, it hardens like instantly.
And when I'm using this stuff, I like to rub fast so that the friction kind of melts it. So it can melt itself down into the pores. And it may not show up very well on film. But basically this is kind of bringing out the color a little bit more. And again, I'm doing this on the back first, just in case it's a complete failure. And it seems to pass, so now I can do the front. Take a clean towel and wipe it off. By the way, I know I said this smells like shoe polish, but don't go using black shoe polish. Come on, have some sense. They do make clear shoe polish for like, you know, I guess other, other than black colored shoes. And that might work. I really don't know. I've never tried it. You can try it and then leave a comment and let me know that, I, that I'm the reason you screwed up your guitar. I have used shoe polish on uh, like leather, you know, things I've made out of leather and dyed them and, you know, did leather tooling and stuff like that. And then I use shoe polish on top of that. But, you know, shoe polish is made for leather. Hey, let's have a video. We're just talking about shoe polish for 15 minutes. <coughs> Now, I never mentioned what I did to the neck. I actually did use some of the true oil on the neck. Um, but I thinned it with a little bit of paint thinner. I also, uh, the, the last coat that I put on the guitar, it was thinned with paint thinner. <clears throat> that may not be necessary because my bottle of true oil is kind of old and it was real thick. So I thinned it because of that anyway. But then I figured, hey, while it's thinned, I'll put some on the fretboard. It may be a bad idea to put on the fretboard, but since I dyed it, you know, I, I wanted something to seal in the dye. <clears throat> and uh, normally you just leave your, your fretboard alone with no finish. You just put like um, oil, like, like mineral oil or lemon oil. They make fretboard oil. But you know, hey, it's your guitar. Do whatever you want. That's what I wanted to do. All right. So now it is ready for assembly. And you'll get to see that next week on Stu Mac guitar kit build. Anyway, thank you for watching. Leave a comment. Let me know what this looks like to you because my brother said it looks like a Harley Quinn guitar. My friend Chad said it looks like the Grateful Dead logo. I'd be interested to see what other red and blue things you think this looks like. So leave a comment and uh, follow and subscribe and hit the like button and do all the things that you can do to help my channel out. I would appreciate it. And go buy a t-shirt. I said it in the last two videos. Have you bought one yet? Get on it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.